230 million years ago, planet Earth was a very different place both ecologically and geologically. To see the world from space in the Triassic period would have been to lay witness to a borderline alien world, with today's modern continents much less obvious and segmented than they are now. For much of the preceding Permian, the world's landmasses had merged together to form one supercontinent, Pangaea, with one colossal ocean, Panthalassa, surrounding it. Now, during the following Triassic, the dawning of the legendary Mesozoic era, Pangaea had begun to split into a few different continents. Gondwana to the south was composed of Antarctica, India, Australia, and parts of Africa. Pangaea, much smaller than it used to be, lay north of Gondwana, composed of North America, South America, Europe, and the rest of Africa. Even further north, connected by a thin strip of land and surrounded by shallow seas, was Laurasia, made up of the majority of what would one day become Eurasia. With Panthalassa to the west and the Paleotethi Sea to the east, littered with the islands that would eventually become China, this was a strange world, full of strange creatures. This particular story takes place on the west coast of southern Pangaea, specifically in a region that would one day become the Ischiwalasto Formation of Argentina, and concerns an animal that scientists would name Herrerasaurus, one of the very first genera of dinosaurs. Herrerasaurus may have been a carnivorous dinosaur, but it was far from the apex predator of its locality. At this time in prehistory, dinosaurs were far from taking over the world as the largest land animals, and many of them were small and inconspicuous. Today, we will be venturing back through time to meet Herrerasaurus and the world it lived in, examining what exactly this dinosaur was, and how it lived in the ancient world of the Ischiwalasto Formation. Sit back and relax as we meet one of the very first dinosaurs to evolve on planet Earth. Herrerasaurus' placement within the dinosaur family tree is, as it stands, just about solved after long periods of uncertainty. It is thought to be a member of the clade Saurischia, which contains non-avian theropods, birds, and sauropodomorphs. The reason for the uncertainty is attributed to the fact that for many years the dinosaur was only known from very sparse remains and has gone through classifications as a theropod, a sauropodomorph, and a basal dinosaur outside of these two groups. It has even been suggested that Herrerasaurus was not a dinosaur at all, but an archosaur closely related to dinosaurs without actually being one itself. As of the time this video was published, the most common consensus regarding Herrerasaurus' placement in the dinosaur family tree is that it was a basal Saurischian in its own family, Herrerasauridae. It is a key discovery concerning the evolution of dinosaurs, both in terms of their origin and radiation into different families and species. As for the dinosaur's appearance, in life it would have been a bipedal carnivore, large for an early species of dinosaur, measuring between 4 to 6 meters depending on the age of the individual. Adults are thought to have weighed about 350 kilograms and were lightly built. It was one of the first animals of its time to become fully bipedal, a notable change from the quadrupedal and semi-bipedal archosaurs that preceded it. Moreover, it was likely a fast animal, with powerful legs and a horizontally held tail to keep balance at high speeds. With its forelimbs free from the confines of the ground, it could use them to grasp and manipulate prey, whilst relying upon its hind limbs to carry it long distances across the open landscapes of the Ischiwalasto Formation. This early design would lay the foundations for the basic form of almost all predatory dinosaurs throughout the Mesozoic era. The dinosaur's long skull 
thin in form and filled with sharp teeth, would have been a perfect tool for snapping at prey items and was more akin to its archosaur ancestors than it was the large carnivores that would succeed it. The jaw could slide back and forth, an adaptation that would have made it easy for the dinosaur to hold prey with its jaws that is only seen today in various species of lizard. The head sat upon a neck that was highly flexible, perfect for tearing flesh from carcasses or snapping up small animals from the ground. Herrerasaurus's fossils were first discovered in the 1960s by Victorino Herrera, a shepherd herding goats in the Andes Mountains of Argentina. Noting strange formations in the rocks close to the city of San Juan, he notified paleontologist Osvaldo Reig, who identified the fossils as a very early genera of an as-of-then unnamed dinosaur. The rocks outside San Juan were later identified as belonging to the extremely paleontologically significant Ischiwalasto formation, which would yield a whole host of early dinosaurs, archosaurs, and therapsids. Alongside Herrerasaurus was another animal, similar in form but much smaller. Reg initially dubbed this animal Ischisaurus catawai and is now thought to resemble a young Herrerasaurus. Herrerasaurus itself was named by Reg in 1963 and was given the specific name Ischiwalas tensis. Its name translates into English as Herrera's lizard from Ischiwalasto. In 1975, more specimens were uncovered from the Ischiwalasto formation by Fernando Novas that were suspected to belong to a new species of dinosaur named Franguelosaurus ischiwalastensis. Franguelosaurus went through the same motions as Herrerasaurus with its identification and classification. It was first suspected to be a basal Sariscian of some kind, then specifically a theropod, and then eventually in 1992 synonymous with Herrerasaurus itself. It wasn't until a complete Herrerasaurus skull was unearthed in 1988 by Paul Serino that scientists were able to begin to solve the classification puzzle with early dinosaurs such as this. They could now begin to play with the idea that dinosaurs were all descended from a common ancestor that might have looked something like a small, possibly quadrupedal Herrerasaurus-like animal. The definite last common ancestor has not been found yet, but the strange animals of Ischiwalasto represent some of the first examples of dinosaurs converging from the wider archosaur group that have been uncovered to date. As of the time this video was published, several partial skeletons are known that have been attributed to Herrerasaurus and these include individuals from several different phases of life. Only one complete skull has been discovered and is in remarkably good condition given its age. With any luck, we will be able to uncover more about this dinosaur in the future to unravel even more mysteries surrounding dinosaur evolution. It takes nothing more than a glance at Herrerasaurus' skull to determine what kind of life it led. With large, serrated teeth curved backwards lining its jaws and a long, slender snout to accompany them, this was without a shadow of a doubt a carnivore. Given the fact that the animal is thought to have measured up to 6 meters in length, we can determine that it hunted small to medium-sized animals in the Ischiwalasto formation, of which we know several species existed. Archosaurs such as the slender quadruped Pisanosaurus, as well as the rhynchosaurs that littered the region, are thought to have been its main prey items. The teeth were likely used to chop and tear at flesh, and both the jaws and the arms would have been used in bringing a kill down. Further evidence of its lifestyle has been found in fossilized Herrerasaurus dung, or coprolites, which are known to have contained small animal bones with no plant matter at all. 
This is an indicator that the animal might have been able to digest bone, implying that it potentially ate the entire carcass of the animals it brought down. Interestingly, as large and dangerous as an adult Hererosaurus would have been, it was not the apex predator of the Ischiwalasto formation. That honor is thought to have gone to the giant Luricatan archosaur Sorosuchus, a huge quadruped whose teeth are thought to have been responsible for puncture wounds in one known Hererosaurus skull. When considering the Triassic period, it is important to remember that dinosaurs were by no means the rulers of the world they are often made out to be in current media. The most dangerous predators of the Triassic were the crocodile-like archosaurs distantly related to the dinosaurs. It was not until the very end of the Triassic that we started to see large prosauropods such as Platyosaurus becoming some of the largest living land animals. The dinosaurs themselves didn't diversify into the dramatic shapes and sizes we associate them with until the Jurassic period. There is also evidence within Hererosaurus' bones that tell us a few things about what daily life might have been like in the Ischiwalasto formation for this animal. Analysis of the scleral ring bones surrounding the dinosaur's eyes suggests that it was cathemeral, awake and active throughout the day for short periods of time before returning to its nest or den to rest, much like a modern-day lion. Hererosaurus are thought to have been potentially social animals, as bite marks have been found on one skull that have been compared to the teeth of another Hererosaurus. Such behavior may have been for battles over the right to mate or potentially over territory. The wounds inflicted by the rival appear to have been the cause of a short-term infection that didn't kill the dinosaur, but would likely have caused intense pain for a period. Hererosaurus was a resident of the Ischiwalasto Formation in what would one day become the San Juan area of Argentina. It lived between 231 and 228 million years ago, a period of time that was known as the Carnian of the Late Triassic. Where today mountains and grasslands stand, Hererosaurus would have thrived in an environment dominated by wide open floodplains and densely packed forests. Rivers would have cut through the environment providing a haven for aquatic life, as well as the many terrestrial animals of the Ischiwalasto Formation. The air was cool and crisp and the region experienced seasonal rainfall that would have caused the rivers of the Ischiwalasto to break their banks and flood the area across points of the year. Plants were present in the form of ginkawallis, podocarps, horsetails, cycads, conifers, and ferns, which would have provided a great deal of choice for some of the area's less picky herbivores. Hererosaurus appears to have been relatively common in both the forests and the plains, where it stalked its prey along the water's edge and deep within the undergrowth. Hererosaurus was not the only dinosaur present at Ischiwalasto. One of the most famous faces here was Eoraptor, an omnivorous biped that is thought to have been a very basal ancestor to the sauropod dinosaurs although you definitely wouldn't know that just by looking at it. With a body plan more like a small theropod and possibly covered in a layer of fuzz-like feathers, this little dinosaur, roughly knee-high on the average human adult, would lay the foundation for the biggest animals ever to live on land. Dreadnoughtus, Argentinosaurus, Patagotitan, and Diplodocus can all potentially trace their family trees back to slender, bipedal creatures such as these. Also present at the Ischiwalasto Formation, and thought to be a relative of Hererosaurus, was San Juansaurus. Smaller than its cousin and more stockily built, this little carnivore would have made a good living hunting the numerous small vertebrates that littered the forest floor of its ancient home. One of the strangest animals of the Ischiwalasto formation was Hyperodapodon, 
This little rhynchosaur was very distantly related to the dinosaurs and was roughly the size of a house cat. To observe Hyperodapodon in life would be to bear witness to the reptile's attempt at the rodent ecological niche. This common herbivorous quadruped is thought to have fed on seed ferns within the formation, using its beak-like jaws to snap them open and crush them. More common at the Ischiwelasto formation were the cynodonts, distant ancestors of the mammals. These dog-like therapsids lived in large numbers here and were likely hunted by predators such as Herrerasaurus. They varied greatly both in size and behavior from species to species, with herbivores at Ischiwelasto represented by Exeretodon and carnivores by Ectonenion and Chiniquidon. The most notable therapsid found here would have been the enormous Ischiwelastia, a dicynodont, almost the size and shape of a hippopotamus. Weighing over two tons and sporting two tusk-like appendages either side of its beaked mouth, it would have spent its days wallowing in the rivers and feeding on vegetation by the banks. While the dinosaurs were slowly evolving in the background, this was very much a world dominated by Pseudosuchians, such as the aforementioned Sorosuchus. In life, this apex predator would have resembled a long-legged crocodile, measuring up to 7 meters long. More than capable of inflicting serious wounds on Herrerasaurus, it likely would have preyed upon the giant dicynodonts of the region. Herrerasaurus is still an animal draped in ancient mystery, yet one we may be able to solve in due time. As we uncover more and more about this dinosaur and the Ischiwelasto formation as a whole, we may be able to learn more and more about dinosaur origins, examining how these creatures were able to take the reins from their archosaur relatives and burst into all kinds of shapes and sizes in the following Jurassic period. With any luck, this won't be something we have to wait long for.